Um, we're going to start with um, the VA grants. Actually, that's not a problem. But, oops. That's a problem. That's good. VA grants. Okay. So in the VA system, it's similar uh, organized to the NIH. So you could look at these as sort of your institutes. There's the biomedical laboratory science, and this is where you would send grants for basic laboratory research, which does include the use of pre-existing patient tissues. So just like David had said, if you're using tissue samples. You can also apply for a clinical science R&D grant. Um, and this is, again, like another institute. And this is where you have to do research that's performed by interacting with a live whole human, so not just tissue samples. You can still have a basic science component in your applic the application, but it must be a live whole human, yes, not a piece of a human. Um, there's also the um, <laughs> HSR&D, and this is research that's going to interface with healthcare systems, patients, and healthcare outcomes. Um, there's also a rehab service, but I thought for a GI audience, we're probably not going to be applying grants to the rehabilitation service, but there is a rehabilitation service. So each of these different um, areas offers career development awards as well as sort of independent investigator awards, which I'll get to in a minute, which would be your R01 equivalent. So um, the VA has a career development award, which is really similar to the K award, and a lot of the same components are in both. The aim of this one is to provide mentoring for young investigators, but in order to apply for this one, you must have a VA-funded mentor. Um, and then to be eligible, cl clinicians must be uh, no more than five years past their last clinical training and no more than 10 years um, past getting your MD. For non-clinicians, this would be our PhDs, you must be no more than five years past getting your terminal degree, which would be your PhD. So the VA system has, of course it has all these rules, right? The VA system allows PhDs to apply, but within the entire VA system, there's only a certain number of PhDs in the entire system. So if there's no openings, then PhDs are not going to be eligible. So at your VA, you're going to have an assistant chief of staff for R&D, and you need to talk to them and find out if there's any spots available for PhDs. And the ones that are available sometimes are only offered for senior people that are already professors. So again, you have to just check to see what the local requirements are at your place. And there's a little bit of local can do a little bit of tweaking on what's nationally put out. So you, again, you just have to check. Okay, so the career development submissions occur twice a year for BL, BLS and C, CSR&D. It's May and November. HSR&D has different timelines, April and October. The budget for clinicians is going to be, um, oh, $50,000. So this is on um, for, the, for your career development. This doesn't include your salary. Your salary as a clinician is covered from medical dollars. It's very, it's very different. Um, but you're going to get $50,000 for supplies. Um, for non-clinicians, it's going to give you $50,000 for supplies, plus it will cover your salary. So your budget's going to be a little bit bigger as a non-clinician. And the focus here, um, what they're really looking for, are studies that are going to be relevant to veterans' needs and then can be um, translated to improving care of the veterans. And so there's a very strong translational push on what they're looking for. Um, and this is actually um, an intramural funding mechanism, so you have to be within the VA system to apply for this. Um, you must have at least a five-eighths appointment, and I know you guys were like, what, eighths, huh? So the VA, you have to work 40 hours a week, and then after that, you can work for the university or whatever. But 40 hours is a VA work week, that's eight-eighths. So if you have five-eighths, whatever that percentage is, is what you need to dedicate to the VA. Three-eighths of that, you work on your grant. Two-eighths, if you're a clinician, you have to do some patient care. If you're a non-clinician, three-eighths is on your research. Two-eighths, you have to participate in... Um, VA service, uh, such as serving on committees in the R&D committees, biosafety, IACUC, IAB, that kind of stuff. The first, mayor, um, the first award uh, is generally three to five years in duration, and some of the clinical science or clinical trials can be five years. Basic science tends to be three years. Submissions for this one um, also occur twice a year, and the dates are here, and it's all in my slides. Um, the budget for this one is going to be 150000 Again, that's um, for clinician salary. Uh, not including clinician salary. This is for lab support, people that you want to work in the lab. Again, your salary comes from clinical or medical dollars. Again, for um, PhDs, it's going to be the 150 plus your salary is going to be included. So um, your chance of winning that Powerball, you know that one point, was that $1.5 billion Powerball? It was um, one in over two million. But uh, I'll tell you that your chance of getting AVA merit is a little bit better. The Career Development Awards were funded at 18 percent, and the Merit Reviews were at 16 percent. 
it used to be much better than NIH funding. I, for a while there, the merits were at least 20, 22 percent, but this is the last cycle um, for spring of 2015. It went down to 16 percent. Okay, so when you do a VA grant, you have to go through grants.gov just like you do if you're going to submit for NIH. Um, the application packets are also available at grants.gov, and you need to know the opportunity number, the, what David was saying, the um, FAO. This really got me all tied up because it's really hard in the VA system to find out what that RFA number is. They've gotten a lot better about publishing what that actual number is to hunt it down. Um, meet with your mentor and your ACOS as um, well in advance of your plan submission like we all talked about. You might have local site requirements that are going to be different, and again, different VA programs have slightly different requirements to what you have to do in your package. Um, this is another tip. Uh, download any and all VA-specific application instructions. Um, so even though it's going to look really similar to NIH, the VA actually is going to have certain headings, and it's going to tell you what to label your files. If you don't label them that exact way, they don't get uploaded into the system. I went through this. I was like, oh, I thought that was just a suggestion. No, it's actually what you're supposed to name it. So for some grants, um, a letter of intent is required. So if you're going to do one of these clinical study or um, clinical trials, R&D, you have to have a letter of intent. Um, but this is going to be in the application uh, instructions. Then your application at the VA is reviewed internally because there has to be a letter from the director of the hospital, and you're going to have to submit this to your R&D committee. It has to be reviewed, and there's a deadline for that, of course. Um, if you look at the AGA, the AGA is going to offer you some research, uh, the Research Scholar Award. This is a Mentored Career Development Award in GI and Hepatology. Um, you can see the eligibility, full-time faculty. There are, you know, you have to be less than or at seven years since completion of your fellowship and PhDs are the same, less than or at seven years since the receipt of your PhD. Percent effort on these is not specified. It's 90000 a year for three years and you can use this for salary support, equipment and supplies. Um, AJ also has the Castell Award um, uh, donated by Don Castell. Um, and this was offered in 2016. I talked to <coughs> Waikina, who, who does the research um, awards panel at AGA. We're not sure if this will be orphaned in 2016. We have to wait to see if Dr. Castell is going to commit the funds or not. But this is clinical research in esophageal diseases. You need to be a full-time faculty position at the at or below the level of assistant professor, less than or equal to seven years since your appointment, 50 percent effort, $25,000 for salary, support, equipment, and supplies. It's a one-time, one-shot deal. There's a microbiome ju junior investigator. Um, this is research related to the gut microbiome. Again, you'll see that the same sort of criteria are going to continue through. Percent effort on this one is not specified. This is 30000 per year for two years, salary, support, equipment, and supplies. There's the um, Augustan Award that's donated by um, Damien and his wife Carolyn. This is to supplement an existing career development award, so this is kind of nice. If you have a K or a VA, a career development award and have one year left on that award, you can apply for this one to get supplemental funds. It's 40000 It's a one-time award. This will support research-related activities. It can't help support your salary, but you can get um, folks in the lab. The ACG has a career development award as well, junior faculty development. This is clinical research related to GI and hepatology, 100000 a year for three years, salary support equipment. Um, again, uh, at or below the level assistant professor less than or equal to seven years since your initial appointment. So really look at the criteria because each of these has a little bit um, tweaking on what your eligibility criteria is going to be. This requires a 50 percent effort. ACG, it's not really a career development award. You can apply for this one. It's basic translational and clinical research and endoscopy. Um, but you're also going to be competing uh, against seasoned investigators. Uh, here's a little trick with this budget. You can request up to $75,000 $75, total costs over the one to two years of this award, um, but there's no set budget. And I used to review grants for these a long time ago. And if, you, you know, if you're reasonable and come in with a, a budget, you're more likely to get the funds where if you try to extend your budget to $75,000 over the two years, you might not be as successful in that. Just a little tip. Oh, AASLD has a whole bunch of career development awards, actually. There's the Pinnacle Research Award. This is a career development award for basic scientists and liver disease. You can see here, full-time faculty position, and you must be within the first three years of your faculty appointment. So again, there's a little wrinkle in this one. Uh, percent effort, not specified. Your funds, 100000 a year for three years, and you can use this for salary, equipment, and supplies. They have a Clinical and Translational Research Award for translational scientists in a liver-related area. Um, this could be an advanced fellow or a faculty. Um, 
The percent effort on this is 50 percent, $75,000 a year for two years, salary, um, equipment, and supplies. There's a CDA in liver transplantation um, to develop the career of a liver transplant scientist, either clinical or translational. Uh, again, you can see the requirements here, but you must be in the first five years of appointment at a UNOS-approved transplant center, so a little bit of twist on that one, 50 percent effort. $90,000 a year for two years. Uh, Crohn's and Colitis Foundation has a whole bunch of uh, opportunities as well, Career Development Award, as well as this broad medical research program that's offered through the CCFA. This is, um, you have to submit a pretty good intense letter of interest, that's peer reviewed. If they like your letter of interest, then they invite you to submit a full proposal and then that gets reviewed. Um, and there's a Kenneth Rainin Foundation for anyone interested in IBD focus. American Cancer Society has a mentored research award focused on cancer and some other foundation awards which are all in my slides and you can just Google their names and get to their website. Um, there's a cholangiocarcinoma foundation, mitochondrial diseases. And then I get this thing from my institution, Trialect, and somehow, I don't know how I sign up for it or, or it just comes to me, but it somehow knows my research interest and it sends me stuff every week. So this would be something that you might be able to get. If you go to this website, I just went to trialect.com, it's got all kinds of stuff on there. but but you can get on this um, listserv as well. Keep going. I'm trying. I don't know, but I don't know what those other acronyms stand for, which is why I asked you to do those. Thank you. That was wonderful. 